Geeks and Gamers, I'm Trey Guillotine and we are back and we're with a new format like I said in my latest video where I'm just kind of breaking down some of the changes or rather that I'm thinking of some changes to add to this channel. One of those is a new format for my videos where you, I used to do like three different kind of videos. I would do like a geek out video, then I do a what you gaming on video, and then I would do a scared gameless video. I am now going to be kind of combining them into one video where we're gonna start with a what you gaming on, then I'm gonna go into a geek out, and then every now and then we'll probably show just a little bit of some jump scares from a scared gameless playthrough that I will be doing. So today we are starting with, for the first time, we are starting with what you gaming on, where I'm gonna ask you, what are you gaming on? If you want to tell me what you're gaming on and have your answer featured in a future episode, let me know the game you're playing, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and leave that in the comments of this video or on any of my social media, and your answer will be featured in an upcoming video of what you gaming on. We're gonna go ahead and jump into what I've been gaming on, and if you've been following on any of my social media, you would know that I've been playing a lot of The Division Two. Now, I was a big fan of Division One. I. I really was. It was a fun game. I enjoyed it. The combat was really good. The gameplay was fun, but it just... The Division One wasn't where I think anyone really wanted it to be just yet. Like, it was right there to being just a truly successful, good game, but there was just, it had a little farther to go, and I genuinely believe that Division Two has met it. Like, the, the Division Two for Ubisoft and for fans of the Division and Tom Clancy games, as I am, I think it's finally hit that point where this is the game we want. This is, everything that is in this game is things that we wanted in Division One, and it's honestly, it's only, a, there are really only a few changes in Division Two from Division One, and it actually, the biggest change for me, and it's the biggest thing that I was kind of critical of in the first Division, is that there wasn't enough to do in each of the different areas. Like, you would go into an area, you'd get the collectibles, you'd do the missions, you would do the, I'm just gonna call it the dungeons, of the division and then you move on and then once you pretty much finished the main campaign and all of the main missions like you could still go on the super tough like kind of raid like areas which I've only I was only ever able to do one like I was only ever able to complete one of them and I just I had trouble getting the gear to the next one and the next one and the next one so a lot of the end game content I didn't really get to experience all that much so the fact that with The Division 2, there is so much more to do in Division uh, in Washington, D.C. as opposed to in New York. There's just so much more to do. There are side missions, which are kind of, they're really just, that's exactly what they are. They're side missions. They're short, little, tough missions that you have to go on. And then you have the main missions, which are basically your dungeons for Division 2. And then you would, and then after that you would have your strongholds. And right now there are four strongholds, which I believe they're going to be adding more strongholds as well as way higher level raids where you can have up to eight player. Well, not even up to eight players. You probably want to go in with a strong with a strong party of eight players into these next raid, these next raid raids, I guess, because I, I feel like the strongholds are kind of raids, and then the main, main missions are dungeons. But whatever whatever you want to call them, I forget the actual name. Uh, just main missions and strongholds, I guess. That doesn't really matter. But there is just so much more to do on the map of Division 2 than there was in Division 1, even after you finish the main story campaign. Like, something that's been talked a lot about Division 2 has been, oh, the end game's amazing. The end game's just gonna blow you away. And it doesn't necessarily, like, I don't think it's the greatest thing since ever, but it is something that keeps you going. It keeps you engaged. It lets you then basically, like, after you've beaten the main campaign, it lets you go back through all of the main missions and the stronghold missions with a new faction. Like, after you beat the game, a fourth faction invades Washington, D.C., and then you go through the, the past missions that you've done but just with a new faction with a slightly different story, and it keeps it, like, it keeps it fresh. It keeps it going. And then even after you've done all those, like, at this point, they just released this, this past weekend, they just released, released their fourth stronghold and their fourth or I guess fifth level tier 
uh, for challenge for challenge mode in the just in the base of world of Division Two, and I've already beaten it. Like I beat it on day one, which I mean, of course, I'm going to be going back through it over and over just to farm gear. But even after you've done all of that throughout the map, there are these kind of like randomly generated encounters that you can go to and do. And it's a very like it's an it's an ever changing map. It actually reminds me a lot of Shadow of Mordor or I don't know, I guess Shadow of War, the second Shadow of Mordor game. Uh, where like you had different strongholds that would be captured or not and like things would change like it's an ever-changing map And I really like that like even after I've beaten the game I'm still able to go out and adventure throughout the world of Division 2 and like see Washington DC and fight it and you know Do different encounters in different areas and I thought that's a really great part of this game like it like the division one it felt like i wasn't able to really do anything else after i beat it there's nothing else that i really wanted to do and now i can like now there there's more to do on the map so i think that's definitely a big bonus for the division two there are some like smaller critiques that i don't like like they change it to where uh in division one whenever you would level up and you could choose your skills you could just do that from your own menu well now in Division 2, whenever you level up and you want to get more skills, you have to go back all the way to your base of operations, which is the White House, and do it there. And I don't know why they made that change, because that's actually really annoying, especially for someone who doesn't really like to fast travel in games, because I like going from point A to point B and kind of explore as I'm going, which if I'm fast traveling, I'm missing that. So I'm missing that like extra exploratory element to it because I don't want to be running back and forth the entire time. So hopefully that's something that's going to change. Like I, I really hope that's like a change they make later on. And whoever thought that was a good idea needs to seriously reevaluate their career in video game design. So if you're playing Division 2, go ahead, let me know what you think about it in the comments or on any of my social media. And remember, if you tell me what game you are gaming on, we will put I will put that in an upcoming video and your response will be shared. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the geek out topic for today. And that is the top three streaming services. This is all of my opinion, and I'm only going to be pulling from three different streaming services, Amazon Prime. Hulu and Netflix. It's just going to be those three streaming services because because through those three streaming services because I really believe those are like the three big ones that are out today. There are plenty of smaller ones that are like specific to one network. Like I think CW, if CW doesn't have one, they're making one. I I know that there is a streaming service about CW. I just don't know if it's out yet. But then there's also HBO Go. There's like Showtime. So there's all these different like smaller specifically networked streaming services, but then there's like the big three, which is Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. So we're just gonna be pulling from those, and this is just my own personal opinion, and we're gonna start with number three, Amazon Prime. One of the biggest benefits of Amazon Prime that I found, and I've only had Amazon Prime for the last few months, but one of the biggest things that I like about it is that if you're a student like I am in grad school, you sign up for Amazon Prime and first with your like like your school email so that they can prove you're a student. First, I was able to get a six month trial period. So right now I'm like in like month two of a six month trial period, which I think is fantastic. And then once I hit the end of that trial period and I want to continue it, I think I get like a slightly reduced discount rate, which I think is amazing. I think that's really fantastic that like Amazon Prime is like focusing on, you know what, you're a student, you're going through college, you're probably not flush with cash. Let's give you the streaming service that's just, just slightly discounted. And I thought that was really great of Amazon Prime to do. Amazon Prime also has a lot of different, like smaller, it has like options to add in those smaller streaming services like HBO Go or Showtime or FX or any of the other network streaming services. And that's really what I've been using Amazon Amazon Prime the most of. Like there's definitely some series on Amazon Prime that I've been watching. I was re-watching Orphan Black, which if you haven't seen that show, stop what you're doing and go watch that show because it's amazing. But I'm also looking forward to Good Omens, which is going to be starting soon, which is like 
tied tied it, it's tied for first as one of my favorite book series and the other book series is actually American Gods which is on Showtime and then I'm also waiting for Game of Thrones which is on HBO and then I'm also waiting or watching Shadow uh, what we do in the shadows which is on FX so it has all of those different network shows but you can watch them through Amazon Prime by paying whatever subscription service for those different channels so that's definitely one of the other big benefits of Amazon Prime. The thing that for me puts Amazon Prime as number three is that their user interface is super complicated. For whatever reason, when I'm whenever I'm going through Amazon Prime, it's just it's super complicated because they have like the Prime network shows that you can watch on Prime, but then they have the Prime network shows that you can watch through Prime, but you have to get a subscription for or you have to rent just that season or just that series. Uh, and then they have the channel shows and they have the shows from other channels that you have to, it's really, it's really, really confusing. And I've done Amazon Prime both on my phone, Xbox and Fire Stick. It's just, it's, it's not a very user friendly interface, which, you know, for someone who is fairly competent in using interfaces and, you know, computer generated user interfaces. It's just, it's unnecessarily complicated in trying to figure out what shows you can and can't watch, or if you need another subscription for this show, but not this show, it gets unnecessarily complicated. And that's why I have Amazon Prime as number three. Number two is Netflix, which in my opinion, I think Netflix is it definitely earned its number two spot. Netflix was the streaming service that kind of started it all. And I remember way back in the day when Netflix wasn't even a streaming service, when Netflix was actually a mail-in DVD service, which at the time I kind of hated Netflix because every time a movie would come out that I wanted to go see, I'd be like, mom, can I go see this movie? Can I have money to go see this movie? And her response was always, no, wait till it's on Netflix. And I hated Netflix for that. Um, but I, I did end up going to go see the movies that I wanted. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. But Netflix is the one that, like, after it was, like, the DVD mail-in rental thing, it then became a streaming service. And now, I think the only rental thing, the, like, the DVD rental thing is, like, Redbox and the one blockbuster left in the world, which... I think is in Australia. I honestly don't know. I know it's... I know there's, like, one blockbuster out there somewhere, but I don't remember where it is. But Netflix is kind of what started it all. Netflix is the one that like created this streaming service monopoly that we're now in today. And it, there's just there's a lot of really good things about Netflix. One of them, as I said, with Amazon Prime with the user interface, Netflix the user interface is really simple. It's easy to use. And another benefit of Netflix is that if you're binging TV shows like I and so many other people do, they have that skip intro button that you get to click every time you get to a new show and you basically just go from the end of one show right into the beginning of another show instead of sitting through the 30 second or minute or two minute intros that some shows like to have. Or if you're watching, you know, Dexter, which like, half of that hour long show is a 15 minute intro of him cooking, which I thought was just, it, it was way too long and boring. Uh, but I can talk about Dexter some other time, but it's just, it's a really friendly user interface and they have a lot of really good shows to offer on Netflix, both from their own, from their own uh, produced original Netflix series, which again, Amazon Prime has a lot of really good produced Netflix, uh, produced Amazon Prime series. But Netflix, again, was the first one of those streaming services, as far as I know, that kind of, you know, they did the streaming service first, and then they started doing their own originally produced content first. And they have a lot of really great shows, well, had a lot of really great shows. They basically just purged all of the Defenders series from Netflix, which was another topic for another video. Um, but the other shows that you have are fantastic. And they also, and the other thing they also have is just a lot of really fantastic shows that they've pulled from other Netflix. Personally, my favorite like group of shows on Netflix are from AMC, where you have Preacher and The Walking Dead and even Fear the Walking Dead. And you, and that's like some of the shows that for me has kept me on Netflix, even after they got rid of Defenders and they just, they have a lot of really strong shows. The thing that 
I feel is kind of a disadvantage for Netflix is that whenever they have a new show, whenever they earn a, uh, whenever they pull a new show, let's use The Walking Dead or Preacher as an example for the shows that are on Netflix, they don't get the next season of Preacher or The Walking Dead until the next season is about to air and premiere on TV. So if you're not watching it, if you're waiting for Netflix to watch the next season of The Walking Dead, you're not going to see it until we're about to get the next season on live TV. And that really sucks that you have to wait that long just to catch up in a show that everyone else has already seen because you're waiting to watch it on Netflix. Now, of course, because everything is more streaming now, chances are that's how everyone is watching it. Because I know ratings for The Walking Dead are dropping very low. Chances are because, one, I don't know, I'm not up on the next season yet because I haven't seen it on Netflix. But two, people are watching it on Netflix. They're not watching it on live TV anymore. They're watching it on Netflix. So I think that's kind of, that that's the reason for me that Netflix kind of drops down to the number 2 spot in streaming services that as great as it is, as much as it's the big behemoth that started this whole thing and the fact that they do have some amazing original content, BoJack Horseman, one of the best series I've ever seen. Uh the re it just the fact that the shows that are on other networks, they kind of get really late in the game. So for that, that's why it's my number two. And number three, if you've, no, I'm sorry, number one, if you've been paying attention, is going to be Hulu. So Hulu, as far as I remember, was the, like the second big streaming service that happened after Netflix became what it became. And Hulu is kind of following that same format where they're, you know, first they were pulling shows from other network from other networks and they started with their own originally produced content for things like Runaways, uh, which is a show I've been catching up on that's still a fantastic show. It's one of the only two, I think two Marvel TV shows that are alive right now is Runaways and Cloak and Dagger, which Cloak and Dagger you can watch on Hulu, but it's also a free form show, which is like the Disney Young Adult channel, which I think is dumb. But anyway, it's again for another video. But Hulu is very similar to Netflix in that it has some amazing shows from other networks. It has some great originally produced content. But the thing that it also has a very user, a very like friendly user interface. But the thing that makes Hulu stand out for me is the fact that they have like live premiering television shows from other networks and they get those shows like a f either a few hours or a day after the show premiered on live cable TV. Now we know like it, it's a foregone conclusion that cable TV it's on its way out. No one's going to have cable TV soon because it's just it's going to die out like pay phones and newspapers unfortunately. But we're not there yet. Like we're not there just Yet there's still cable TV shows and there's still cable TV shows that I personally want to watch. Like for Hulu, I've been catching up on The Rookie, which is Nathan Fillion's show right now. It's about cops and it's about the LAPD. It's actually a pretty good show. It's a lot better than I was expecting it to be. But right now it's like it's in its first season and it's premiering live on whatever network it is. I, I honestly don't know what network it's actually premiering on, but after it premieres, I then get to watch it on Hulu, and that's where Hulu really stands out, that yes, Amazon Prime also does that, where you can watch shows live if you subscribe to it, but Hulu has those shows in its subscription service that you can watch those shows. But then you can also just get the next highest level and you don't have ads. So then you also get all of those really great channels. Hulu also does a lot of other network options like HBO, just like Amazon Prime does. And they also just have a lot of, like a lot of strong selections of shows from other networks and also originally produced TV shows. So I really think that Hulu is number one right now on my list because it does the best parts of both Netflix and Amazon Prime while just staying ahead and doing their own thing. They have a very user-friendly interface. They have those other networks. They have live they have live premiering TV shows that happen every week. So I really think because of that, because it does like the best parts of both Netflix and Amazon Prime, Hulu is number one. But now I want to hear from you. So you, the geek, the gamer, the viewer, let me know what your thoughts are on some of your best 
podcast on what you think is the best streaming service out there right now. Is it Hulu? Is it Amazon Prime? Is it Netflix? Is it HBO Go? Is it one that I haven't mentioned today? So let me know in the comments and follow me on all my social media. And remember, if you want your answer featured in an upcoming episode, let me know what game you're gaming on, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and your answer will be featured. So check out all my social media, let me know your thoughts, and subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun.